remember, follow it as best you can. Although it's okay to cheat once in a while. So last night, Temba did not sleep at home. Good evening and welcome to Talk with Rams live. And tonight I'm joined by my good friend, our resident coach, funding coach, Zara Roger. And uh, we're going to talk about funding as we always do with Zara, but today we're going to mostly sp uh, sp spend time on, on funding during this COVID period, but we'll also talk, talk about funding in general. Zara, good evening. Evening, Rams, good to be here. Good to see you. Likewise. You lost your spark. You can't. We can't let we can't let COVID kill the spark. No. It, it, my, uh, my microphone is doing something, but can you hear me? I can hear you, Rams. Good. I'm saying it can't have the last laugh. We we should be in charge. Absolutely. So Zara, last night I had a one-hour chat. With the with our viewers now i find myself saying viewers i'm so used to saying listeners now i say viewers because people are viewing us live now and people were raising issues about how it is difficult to access funding especially those people who are currently looking for funding relief funding during this COVID. people who, are, who produce products that should be helping to 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 uh, to relieve us during this COVID-19. And they say, but we don't know where to go for the money. We don't know who to talk to. We don't know how to apply. But most importantly, I want to know what is out there? Well, Rams, that's an interesting question because there's so much out there at the moment and navigating it can be quite tricky. Um, there's different types of funds and it all depends on what a business is struggling with. So. You touched on those businesses that are manufacturing or making goods and supplying goods for the COVID pandemic. And if we look at that, if we say, okay, there are businesses out there that are either manufacturing goods or they're supplying goods, there are funds available for that from your financial institutions. From government, the IDC and the NEF are supporting it from that perspective. And then your commercial banks, your alternative lenders are all looking at the COVID funds and the supply thereof at the moment. I think one of the big things that businesses need to be careful of and need to be aware of is that this is not something that's going to be around forever, but it is going to be around for a little while. So if they are looking to establish themselves as suppliers or manufacturers of these products, they need to also look at it from the perspective of what happens after COVID. And any financier, any funder that's going to come to the table and look at financing them is also going to want to see that they've thought about that and what are their plans. Or is it just a short-term project is that all there is to it? In that case, that's more for guys that are supplying products as opposed to people that are necessarily looking to set up factories to, to supply COVID materials. But some examples that we've seen and that there are some businesses we're helping to raise funding for COVID um, are, are things like water supply, uh, guys that are manufacturing um, those face shields that uh, protect, we see a lot of guys in, um, in uh, supermarkets, we know doctors are using them, the tellers uh, at supermarkets, et cetera, they're using those visors. So there's a client of ours and they've retooled their machinery and they're saying, you know what, we're gonna supply visors into the market. So for that, we're going to look at approaching the developmental funders and there there's funding at really good rates. Um, but ultimately, and, and we'll touch on those, the, the elements of bankability, sustainability still remain. Rams, are you there? Rams? Well, while we wait for Rams to come back and, and figure that out, what I'm going to just say as well is, so there's funding available for those businesses that are looking to obviously supply COVID um, goods into the market. There's also funds available for businesses that are looking for relief. So that's a lot of the funding that we heard the president speak about right at the beginning of this lockdown. Um, the relief fund that's available through the, the Department of Small Business Development. There are also relief funds from other financial institutions. And essentially those funds are available to any business that's suffering due to COVID. 
And that's really important. There are a lot of businesses out there that's, that have been struggling before COVID and are trying to use COVID as a reason to access some of the funding. That's not going to fly. These institutions are still going to ask you for your bank statements, for your financial statements. They're going to look at the company and make sure that your, your difficulties are due to COVID-19. If that's not the case, those funds aren't available to a business. So it's important to understand that the COVID funds relate to matters specifically with regards to COVID, either a business struggling and losing market share because of COVID or a business that is supplying and, and developing product for COVID. I hope you can hear me now. Yes. <laughs> Good. The, and I'll tell you why why you would miss me because what I what I would have done is put my mic on uh, on mute when you speak because when you speak we get a we get an echo. My micro your my microphone is close to the to the speaker, so it gives us an echo. So that's what happened. Sorry for that. I'm gonna acknowledge uh, some of our viewers as they come in for a while, and then I'll come back to you, Zara. Uh, I had uh, I saw Frederick Mavisa is there. Nozuko Vicky Chagavula says hello, guys. Mpom Guni says, thanks for this. Looking forward to the information. Ogu Timunate Maleker is in. Uh, William Mansu is in. Philip Enoch is in. Pretoria is in. He says, Pretoria in the house. And uh, there is a slight delay that uh, Fred is making us aware of. Pardon us, guys. Uh, that's part of technology. We are now live. We can't fix that now. Zara, my next question for you is, if my business is suffering currently because of COVID, if I can prove it that I'm suffering because of COVID, and let's make it practical. Let's say I was a, a 200,000 per month revenue kind of business. And since COVID, my revenues have gone down to 110. Do I qualify? How much could I apply for? And what is the process? you do qualify um so yeah sorry i don't know if you heard me for a second they're getting used to this new technology but what i was saying is um that absolutely businesses who are struggling who are feeling that they're losing sales they're losing market they're losing customers because of covid can absolutely apply to the relief funds i will state this however and we've seen this happen um with a lot of the financiers is that some of this funding is, is running out <laughs> in a way. So what's happened is that the president announced these funds, uh, some of the financial institutions came forward and said, okay, we're managing funds, there's relief funds available. And these funds have been seriously oversubscribed to because businesses, because of the lockdown, just about everyone stopped working. And what that has done is it's put a lot of businesses in, in a relief, in, in a requirement for that relief funding. So while there are funds available, while businesses are saying that, yeah, oh, sorry, rather, while businesses do qualify if they've lost some of their revenue, um, accessing those funds can be a little bit tricky. And one thing that I want to make the viewers aware of is an understanding that these funds have come in overnight. And so, of course, the institutions that are managing the funds, that are dealing with these funds, are also playing catch up. It's not like they had the typical, you know, six to 12 to 18 months to plan a fund. So there's going to be bottlenecks. There's, there are going to be problems. That's normal. That happens even with funds that have had time to establish themselves properly. What I think is going to happen and what I believe uh, will likely happen is that while funds get depleted, new funds will come into the system. So it's important to stay abreast of what those are. I do know that the IDC also has a fund for businesses in distress. Um, it, it is a little bit more, um, there are a lot more requirements for the IDC's fund and they like to see businesses that are typically either have been their clients before um, or that are relatively maybe slightly larger. The other, the other institutions you can go to are the likes of CIFA, that the Department of Small Business Development, business partners, um, and uh, there's also the fund that's been set up uh, by Al Baraka Bank with um, Willerton Oil, and they've set up a relief fund as well. So there's a number of funds in the market. 
What is also important is to understand that businesses need to check what the requirements are. So there's a lot of businesses that have approached us and said, I've submitted applications, I'm not carrying back. Remember, so let's take, for example, you know, normal case in points. Um, there, are, there are some funds that have received tens of thousands of applications in the first two weeks of this lockdown. Now, if your application is missing critical information, if you haven't put your company documents into your application, if you don't have annual financial statements, if you can't produce um, tax clearance if you're going to government, all these things make it very difficult for them to help you. And because they're dealing with so many applications, the likelihood is if you don't have things in order, you're just not going to hear back from them because they have to get to the next application. And so as businesses, sometimes we feel, you know, the financier isn't getting back to us. They don't care. I've submitted my application and they're not responding. We need to understand that they are also overwhelmed from the situation. Every business out there that hears about them is putting in an application, whether it's complete or incomplete, complies or does not comply. They're not really looking at that. A lot of the funds, for example, require that the business is owned by South Africans. Not only is it a South African business, but the ownership, the shareholders are also South African. And they're getting so many applications from businesses that are owned by non-South Africans. It takes time to go through those applications. And this is what we need businesses to understand. We also need to be responsible as business and understand, read through the guidelines, try and see what are they telling us about what they're looking for as an applicant. Let me read some of the comments and I'll ask you a question just now. Makudu says, uh, I'm in Hira, Zara and Rams, I'm listening. Mpomguni has got a question and I like, she's got two questions, but I'm gonna want, ask them one at a time. How is the relief fund different? Is it a grant? And what are the terms of a relief fund? So it's not a grant, it's a loan. It's there to assist businesses with uh, covering some of their costs or making sure that they can pay employees, keeping them going for a period of time. In terms of the repayment, I have to be honest, I don't necessarily know what exactly what the repayment is. It all depends on who the financier is. So you've got business partners, you've got Albaraka Bank, you've got the Department of Small Business Development, you've got the IDC. It really depends on each institution, but they are all loans. I can give you an example of one of the loans we applied for. What we applied for was the um, South African Future Trust, SAFT. That's the Oppenheimer Fund funding that's available via your bank. So what you do is you apply it through your bank, um, you put in the details of all your employees, and they contribute a small portion, but it's something and it helps. They contribute on a weekly basis towards your employees' um, salaries. And that's one I can say for sure, the way that one works is it's an interest-free loan and it's repayable in year five. That's it. So basically you get the loan today, it's interest-free and you need to repay it in your five. The next question from Paul is now about funding, not necessarily now relief funding, but you know whether it's funding opportunities during COVID. She says, what about the service industry? Seems as though most funding is geared towards manufacturing or production. What happens to people who are looking for funding during COVID that are offering services? This, whether whether it's COVID or anyone else, or any other time of of uh, the economic situation, uh, funding for services businesses is tough. It's not it's not readily available. Um, primarily, you'd be looking to your alternative financiers if you're a service business um, for COVID. Service businesses do qualify for relief funding. What, what I read from that, Zara, uh, is that uh, we, we probably have to do our own review of our own businesses as, as, as business people out there and say, what is working now? What is realistic? What is the country needing now? Because the truth is manufacturing is where what the country's concentrating on. And chances are that even financiers would be interested in those people uh, more because they know there's appetite for that. I'm not saying services 
uh, our service industries don't are not necessary. I'm in the service industry. I know. Yes, I, and I've never bothered asking for one. Yeah. Well, you know, we always slightly different because I think when they, when we finish speaking now, I expect people to call you to help them to, to apply for these relief funds, and then you and them can make money. Uh, yes, I've got a very funny comment. <laughs> a comment here. I don't know how to respond to this. Pasha Tangho says, yesterday I tuned to Metro and did not find you there. Well, I did not find myself there for the last 14 months, mate. I don't know what did you expect. <laughs> anyway, Tabang Meru Mutamina says we are in. Frederick Mabitela says, with new business, uh, perhaps uh, as the examples uh, given of must, etc. Et what are the key indicators you look for in the criteria of sustainability uh, at this uncertain time. If I'm, I think what I understand Freddie to say is that if I'm going to to be applying for funding at this moment, is the funder going to be so sure that I, my business is gonna is gonna survive this period? So there's two aspects to that. So firstly, let's consider. Um, if you're just supplying, so you're you're getting masks from wherever you're getting them from, and you're supplying them to a customer, whether it be governments or hospitals or you know uh, corporates, wherever it is that they're required, um, that is about contract finance. You need to get a contract from your from your uh, customer, and then you go get that contract finance. That's short term uh, finance. That's quick turnaround. That's not really so much about sustainability. Um, but if you're going to be manufacturing product, that is more about sustainability. So ultimately, at the end of the day, what, what I was saying earlier is understand a little bit. You're saying that at the moment there's a market. Understand what would the market potentially be for your masks. Let's say you're manufacturing masks. What would the, what would the opportunity for you be after COVID? And masks are being used every day all over the world in various industries. It's just that the requirement for them right now has boomed completely. It's out of control. Um, so if you're going to be looking at that, let's actually rather consider what are the fundamentals of bankability. And I always talk about the fundamentals of bankability, Rams, because at the end of the day, whether we're talking about COVID or not, these are extremely important. Financiers want to know that your business is going to be um, sustainable in order to repay your loans. So if you look at that, you need to be able to show that you've got the team in place that's going to be able to not just run the business, but is going to be able to run that manufacturing. Extremely important. You need to show that you've got markets. So you need to show that you're being, you're being, um, you're receiving requests. Businesses are coming to you and saying, we want to procure masks. And then you need to show that you're already starting to engage with some of them to potentially be uh, clients of yours post COVID. Or you need to show that the machinery you're bringing in can be repurposed, retooled to do something different once that demand is gone. So there are various ways to look at that. I must say this as well. A lot of the funders that are looking to help businesses with um, the manufacture of COVID supplies are looking for businesses that have track record, that have done this before. Unfortunately, we're in a situation where there isn't time for trial and error. So they want businesses that know how to do it, even if it's on a small scale and now you're going bigger. You've got track record, you've been doing this, um, and now you've, you know, there's a, there's a market opportunity for you. So typically they're looking for one to two years minimum track record. But there are some amazing funds out there. If we look at the likes of the NEF and the IDC, they are providing uh, an MCEP. IDC has an MCEP COVID-19 fund, and that's for manufacturers. Um, and it's, it's for CapEx and working capital. That fund is capped at 2.5% interest. It's almost nothing. It's over 48 months, and you've got your first, first year, uh, there's a payment moratorium on that. There's a, there's a payment holiday. So it's fantastic funds. Those funds are there. But they are going to be sure to look at, they're going to want to see your annual financial statements. They're going to want to see your tax compliance. They're going to want to see that the team has the knowledge and ability to run that business. And they're going to want to see that you've got proof of market. They're going to want to see either uh, contracts or letters of intent to procure that product from you. I love that, but I'm gonna put you on the spot here. What if I, I just 
discovered a huge opportunity for manufacturing. I do not have, I've not been trading. It's a new opportunity. I've got a, a buyer and let's say they're in Zambia. Could I access this fund and show them that I'm going to manufacture, therefore I'm going to need CAPEX and I'm going to need OPEX for me to meet the demand that is already on paper given to me by a potential client. But no, I don't have annual financials because I'm starting this thing from scratch. Um, that's going to be really tricky at this point in time. We have to also remember that these COVID funds are, at the moment, for example, the IDC's fund, is it's available for three months. So we're already one month in. There's only two months left. You need to be able to apply and deploy your funds in these three months. Your machinery needs to arrive in that time. So there's various factors to consider. And then there's that big uncertainty. Do you even know how to run this? So my suggestion to a business that gets an opportunity like that, which is an amazing opportunity, try and find a partner. Try and find someone that does have skills, that is operating. Maybe there's a factory out there that's making, that was making, I don't know, sanitary towels. And they're, they, well, that's still an item that's very much required. So they, their production probably hasn't gone down. But assuming that, you know, they're not running at full capacity, can they retool their machines? I don't know. I don't know if that exactly works. But is that someone that you could partner with? Could you get a little bit of working capital loans out and could you make that order happen? But as a startup, to be completely honest, I don't see that going through fast enough for you to take advantage of that opportunity. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, fortunately, I don't have that opportunity, so it was a, a, <laughs> uh, a rhetorical <laughs> question. <laughs> Musedin Kanyan says, uh, this soft loan, doesn't pay owners of the business. Many small businesses uh, have the owners as the main employees. How is it helping small businesses? I it know, does. I know being the only employee of my business. Well, I know not being the only employee of my business, but I do know that SAFT is only contributing to my employees, not to myself or my business partner. We're the owners um, and directors of the business and we're not benefiting from SAFT. And unfortunately, I, I don't think it makes much sense. I, I disagree with it, but I didn't write the rules. Um, that's, what, that's what it is. So at this point, I would suggest, and I, I've been saying this to business owners when I speak to them, speak to, your speak to your banks, speak to your financial institutions, speak to your creditors, see if they can offer you a holiday. Also speak to your financial planners if you've got them to understand what implications that will have. Um, a lot of banks are offering payment holidays on your uh, personal loans, on business loans, on um, things like asset finance, your bonds. And that's great. It helps. It's, it helps your, your immediate cash flow. However, it can have implications down the line by, in, in the sense that while you're not paying, you are still accruing interest on those loans. So you're going to have to repay that and it could actually increase your your term significantly. So understanding what that's going to mean is important. However, if cash flow is a problem, it is a good solution. It is a good option to go to your financial institution, speak to them and say, can I get a payment holiday? And most of them are really, it's, you don't even need to do more than either send them an email or give them a call and they'll pretty much say you've been approved. Provided you've been good in terms of keeping up with your, your repayments uh, prior to COVID. Etze Nimark uh, wants to know, my employees will not get paid this month because my clients did not pay my March invoices. UIF did not even acknowledge receiving my application. What do I do? So you see, this is a little bit tough for me to answer. I have to be honest, because what we do is we facilitate the funding from financiers for business, for business development. That's what we do. So in terms of the UIF applications, that's not... That's not what we do. I haven't done any of those applications. We, in fact, um, did our application to, um, to the UIF via our accountants. So they took care of that for us. Um, and and that's, that's undergoing the process because they know how to go about doing that. So it's a specific process. You need to make sure documents are, are, are submitted properly. What I do know from the news and from um, from reports is that the UIF is also experiencing 
huge applications. And, you know, we, we, this is unfortunately the situation we're in. Every institution is suddenly getting bombarded with applications and they just aren't uh, capacitated to deal with this influx. Um, so my suggestion would be perhaps there's something you didn't do correctly. If you did, just resubmit it again. Otherwise, maybe try, speak to your accountant, see if they can help you with that process. They should be able to. I'm sorry we're also treating you as agony and to solve all other problems, but, but don't worry. When you cannot answer it, just say, that's not in my space. Uh, Prayden Precious Malachi wants to know what kind of proof do they need to prove that I have been affected by COVID? They need an affidavit, a letter from my accountants. How do I prove that I'm a COVID uh, victim Suffer. from a business yeah, a point of view? Victim of COVID, yes. Well, look, essentially what you're looking at is getting your bank statements, your financial statements, and showing that there is a decline. You can also go, you can also have the situation where, for example, you've had to close your business, you're not allowed to trade, so right away, of course, you're not, you're not generating any revenue if you're closed. Um, you can also provide proof from the likes of your clients that perhaps have sent you letters to say, we cannot pay you this month, um, all that, demonstrates that uh, you've been affected. An affidavit, you can you can do that to support, but you need to be able to show that um, you're, you're experiencing a decline or a decrease in your revenue or a complete stop of your revenue. So once again, what I said at the beginning, there's a lot of businesses that weren't doing well before COVID and are trying to use COVID as, the, as, a, as a, uh, a reason um, for, for their situation, or they're trying to take advantage of the fact that they are COVID relief funds. If your business was not generating revenues before COVID, then it's not because of COVID that you're in the situation you're in. And that's very important to also, you know, be aware of and not fall into that trap. Let's leave COVID for a second. I think you've answered most of the questions. Now, I need to ask you about, and, and this is for the benefit of, of all entrepreneurs and post COVID. We need to talk to Uzenzen. I believe people must talk to Uzenzen. I know what you do, but I want you to, you know, briefly explain to why entrepreneurs and under what circumstances should they come to you and what would you then help them with to access out there in the market? Okay, great. So what we do is we essentially facilitate access to finance. What, what we are is the conduits to financiers as well as for financiers, we are the conduits to entrepreneurs. We help businesses understand how to go about accessing the funding they need. We understand the various funding that's available in the markets. A big part of that and a big part of what we do is grants uh, that are available from the DTI, so the likes of the Black Industrialist Scheme, the Agro Processing Support Scheme, uh, the Fulman Center, the Export Marketing Investment Assistance, and, and a range of others. Um, there's, there's a number of grants available at the DTI, as well as loans from developmental banks, government banks, so the likes of the IDC, the NEF, um, as well as then your commercial banks and a, a range of alternative financiers. So those are financial institutions that aren't banks, so they don't do any, um, any uh, trade, but they do, they do finance businesses. They're not retail banks, they're not retail centers. Um, so what we do is we engage with businesses. A business will come to me and say, Zara, what we're looking for is um, funding to buy a 10 million rand machine so that we can manufacture, um, you know, glass glasses to uh, pick and pay, for example, as well as a whole bunch, as well as the hotel sector, whatever the case might be. We'll understand you know, do they have the elements of bankability in place? And then we'll help them through the process of ensuring that their application is correctly submitted to the institution that will be able to fund their requirements. So that's essentially what we do. We then also facilitate all communications with a financial institution. We take, we essentially hold a business owner's hand through that process of accessing funding, which most uh, businesses unfortunately find extremely difficult to navigate. As we conclude, Zara, I, I want I want you to come back soon, and I want us to talk about uh, invoice discounting. Sure. 
I, I, I believe that there is a huge opportunity for small businesses to use that kind of funding to keep operational. Because especially those people who do business with, I'm not going to call them bad pairs, let me call them slow pairs. There are opportunities out there to get your invoices paid through a funder while you're waiting for your payment from somewhere else. Of course, it does have cost to it. But I, I want to talk about it because we cannot afford for business people to stop trading because they're waiting for an invoice that is legit that is going to be paid when there are opportunities to, to discount that invoice. Absolutely. Happy to discuss it. Let's let's do a session where we discuss invoice discounting and contract finance. Um, I think that's absolutely, it's a huge, huge opportunity for businesses um, and they should be taking advantage of it. And let's unpack how that funding works a little bit. Yeah, and I'm sure by that time when we do it, you will have your board at the back and you'll be illustrating stuff. Now we can do it. Now we're on TV. You can do that kind of stuff. But Zara, I have on the on the strap line the, the website address, but how else can they get hold of Uzenzele if they are too lazy to go www? Well, honestly, you can call us, but I would recommend going via the website because what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to go through our process. We've got a form on our website. You can fill that in. We do a preliminary assessment. We'll ask you for some information. And it just speed tracks everything because if you give us a call, I can tell you that my office is going to say, please, can you fill out the form? It's the first step along the way to seeing how we're able to assist you. And if we can't assist you, what we do is we try and connect you with someone who can. Look out for an email from uh, me because I'm going to be needing funding for Talk With Rams Live TV because now I see this thing can work. So you're going to have, help me to find funding for this thing and you're going to make it big. Zara Roji, always wonderful chatting to you. It's been beautiful. Have a great evening. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Rams. Thank you. And thank you so much to everyone joining us. We've seen all your questions. Uh, if some of them need to be responded to, post this conversation with Zara. I'll ask you to respond to them. But as I always do say, please press your notifications uh, on, your, on, your, on your device. That's the bell item. So that every time we go live, you can see that we are live and you can participate in this conversation. Share with everybody else. We'd like to make sure that uh, one, you either enter the space of entrepreneurship. If you're already in the space, you do the right things, you get all the advice you can get. Hopefully you get to come here and share your own story, but most importantly, that you grow. You are the only people that are going to create employment in this country. So I truly appreciate what you do as hustlers. I truly appreciate your support of this platform. From me, Rems Mabote, good night and God bless.